Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is Nico and you're watching Dare to Game. Today I'm going to be doing my ultimate super final never going to change probably maybe review. Last night I finally passed 1000 hours in game time for Kingdom Come Deliverance between my PS4 and the PC. Mostly on the PS4. Eight months later I finally feel that I have played it enough to safely judge the game in its entirety. In that 1000 hours, I have maxed out Henry four times, completed every single side mission at least twice, completed the main storyline four times, and explored every single nook and cranny of Bohemia, at least the parts that Warhouse made available to me. I've killed literally thousands of people, in game of course, and stolen literally 45 million groschen worth of stuff from the people of this beautiful game. I have produced 145 plus YouTube videos about this game, and I'm currently halfway through yet another playthrough on my new PC. So I think that I have earned the right to review this game and give my full opinion. I have obviously played this game a lot, and that should make the next statement an obvious one. I love Kingdom Come Deliverance. I think that especially for their first ever release, Warhorse Studios knocked it out of the park with this one. A game like this is one that we do not get often. At least not nearly often enough. This game is seriously on par if not better than Oblivion, Mountain Blade, or even The Witcher 3. The level of immersion that I have experienced as Henry of Scalots is the deepest I have been into any game since I don't even remember when. So sit back and hopefully enjoy my ultimate 1000 hour review. Spoiler, it will not take me nearly that long to finish this video, and there also may be some spoilers ahead for the story, but that should be expected from a review of this nature. For starters, we will talk about the good. Kingdom Come Deliverance is a completely unique narrative that doesn't feel like just another generic game to line the creator's pockets. This game truly feels like it was a passion project from start to finish. The attention to detail is top notch and makes every single square inch of this enormous map feel real and lived in. I can't tell you how many times I've played a game and I've walked into a city and every house might as well be a cardboard cutout because you can't go into most of them and the ones you can enter all look the same inside. Whereas Kingdom Come is vast, diverse, and unique, with a story waiting behind every door, tree, or mud-covered pig. Speaking of the narrative, the creators of this game did something truly spectacular with Kingdom Come Deliverance. They were able to take a series of genuine historical events and turn them into a wildly entertaining and engaging gameplay experience, all while teaching the player an accurate historical account of 1400's Bohemia. Now, I can personally say that this was something that I enjoyed greatly, both as an avid gamer and a crazy history buff. These people were able to tell a top-notch story with no magic or fantasy elements, no classic video game tropes like being the chosen one or having every good guy turn out to be a bad guy. They didn't shove any modern-day politics into it, and they didn't seek to drive any hidden agenda. They just made a good game. And as far as voice acting and direction goes, it's simply one of the best gaming experiences I have ever had. With a few very small exceptions, the cutscenes and many of the dialogue conversations in this game were fantastically executed, and worthy of every ounce of praise sent their way. Now, let's talk about graphics. Since this is the good section, I won't mention any of the bugs, glitches, or optimization issues with this game. That comes later. For now, I will simply address the amazing graphical fidelity and attention to detail that we get to see in this game. I remember the very first time I booted this game up on my PS4 and experienced the introductory cutscene. No dialogue, no dramatic music, no combat montage, just a sweeping shot of silver scallops, showing off the amazing shaders, stunning vistas, and intricate details in that world. That stands out to me. Because as a player of many large, ambitious open world games, it's refreshing to see one that really speaks for itself. Especially when you consider that this is Warhorse's first debut into the gaming world. And for all intents and purposes, this is an indie game. 
As I have already said, the cutscenes are amazing and would serve as an entertaining movie on their own. In addition to the stunning world and beautiful cutscenes, Kingdom Come Deliverance also delivers convincing movements, dynamic weather and day and night cycles, and well executed animations for most of the things that players can do, such as combat, alchemy, picking flowers, and repairing weapons. Now it's time for the bad. I know, I don't like complaining about games, especially ones that I love, but when you play a game for a thousand hours, you will always find something to complain about. So, in this section, I will address things that I think Warhorse did not so good in, and that I hope to see improvements in the future for their company. Here, I think it is only natural to start with my potentially largest gripe for this game, which is how two-dimensional and boring most of the NPCs are in this game. While there are a few interesting exchanges that can be had with a half dozen NPCs across the map, there are literally hundreds of them walking around. Some of these NPCs do not even offer the option to have a conversation with, or enact in any way. Whereas the rest of them that do offer you, only offer, generally, a few generic scripted responses to a couple questions that you can choose to ask them. While this is, in fact, a complaint I have with many open world games, that does not mean Warhorse gets a free pass here. It doesn't matter how beautiful a world is, how great the story is, or how awesome the weapons are. If I walk up to an NPC and try to talk to him or her, and can only ever ask what kind of governor Sir Hanish is for the thousandth time, it will immediately take me out of the experience. Now, I'm not one to complain without offering solutions. So I suggest a simple interaction system where you can walk up to any NPC at any time and you could have four simple options, such as joke, flirt, threaten, or talk, or something to that effect. This would make it feel less like you were just along for the ride, and more like that you are Henry, and you are talking to a person, not just a line of code in a computer simulation. Also, give them names. It's pretty immersion-breaking to talk to townsmen, unless that was the most popular name in Bohemia, right next to Woodcutter, because it seems like that is the only person I've ever run into. Another brief complaint for the bad section is that of the DLC's length and overall content. I am of the firm belief that if a game is finished on release, and that the DLCs are their own separate story, not just cut content, then paid story DLCs are fine, and I will always buy them if it's a game that I enjoy. So as far as that is concerned, I have no problem paying more horse for these DLCs, because I am fine with giving them my money for their great work, and because it allows me to experience that much more of this wonderful world that they've created. However, having only played From the Ashes at this point, I can say that they are dangerously straddling the line between cost and minimum content. Although I had a fun experience and enjoyed being able to do the things that this DLC offered, I feel that a great many opportunities were missed, and that is something that always bothers me. A game like this would really lend itself to the ability to customize your own house, decorating it with your many trophies and possessions, or equipping your garrison to be the best armed fighting force in the entire fiefdom. Or even some dynamic bandit problems that as bailiff you would have to deal with. However, all of these opportunities were missed in the From the Ashes DLC, and that is a shame. Now that we are done with the good and the bad, it's only logical to move on to the ugly. And for the ugly, I only have three complaints, and only one of them is serious. So for starters, one of my minor gripes is that this game takes getting dirty way too far. I understand that medieval times were dirty, and that by today's standards, we would think everyone was filthy. But people did not just walk around covered in mud and shite. And it wasn't dirtier back then because of some magical mudslinging tree problem. It was dirtier because people didn't bathe very often. So why is it that I go to the bathhouse, pay for a wench and everything that goes with it, walk out shiny clean, and by the time I reach the front gates of Rite, my helmet is already caked in mud. I wasn't rolling around on the ground, for cripe's sake. A bunch of kids didn't run up and pelt me with mud balls. So why is my head covered in mud? I understand that after a fight with bandits in the woods, I would be bloody, my clothing might be damaged, and I may have gotten dirty, especially if I had been knocked off my horse. But this system needs some serious retooling in their next game. Another minor gripe is something that would have been a serious gripe if they had not already addressed it, and that is of course, bugs. While I would say that it has certainly had less bugs on release than a Bethesda game, there were some prevalent bugs. 
like NPCs falling through the ground, Henry being shot a hundred miles up into the sky just for using an alchemy table, and countless examples of NPCs walking into walls for hours on end, or standing on top of things twitching like they're possessed. While these may sound funny, many people were not fans, and quit, and then told other people not to play the game. If any of you are listening right now, know that it is safe to return. This game is pretty much bug-free, and apart from my final complaint, it plays like a proper AAA title. Finally, I will mention the last serious ugly point for this game, which is rendering. Now this is something that should be noted that Warhorse has done a lot to make better. And it is not nearly as bad today as it was for the first five months of being out. But there are still some isolated incidents that leave a bad taste in my mouth. Kingdom Come sometimes tends to have buildings or entire towns not rendered in while you are standing directly inside of them. Just a bunch of floating windows and people seemingly magically walking about a story off of the ground. And that is not to mention the fact that many NPCs are constantly in a state of unrendered textures, making them look like blocky potatoes with dull blue shirts that don't seem to connect at the shoulders. So this is still something that Warhorse should be working on, and certainly should address in their next game. Oh yeah, and lastly, enough with the vague DLC release dates. What is so hard about just saying that the Amorous Adventures of the Bold Sir Hans Capon will be released on the PS4, Xbox One, and Steam on October 1st? What's with all this early fall nonsense? What harm would it do to just let your fans know when it's coming out? Alright, rant over. In summary, I played a thousand hours so you don't have to, but I would strongly recommend picking up a copy if you haven't already. Because Kingdom Come Deliverance is a game that doesn't come along very often, and it should not be missed if you consider yourself an RPG gamer. Thanks. Well, that's another video in the books. I hope you liked it. If you did, smash that like button, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to put some links on the screen here to help you subscribe and maybe see another video. But in any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.